Uh, hi, uh, my name is Kyu Hyun Kim, Kim Kyu Hyun for Koreans. Uh, I teach Korean history at the University of California at Davis. And uh, for, uh, for undergraduates who are interested, uh, there will be, I'll be teaching a Korean history course in spring quarter. So please uh, come and take it. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to introduce uh, uh, Consul General of the Republic of Korea in San Francisco, Mr. Uh, Shin Jae Hyun. Uh, Pro, uh, Mr. Shin has been wor working as a Director General for North American Affairs in charge of Korea's uh, bilateral relations with the U.S. and Canada since uh, 2015. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, immediately before that, he was also Ambassador Director General for North Korea Nuclear Affairs and Director General for Human Resources uh, since 2013. Uh, Mr. Shin has been a career diplomat for 29 years. Uh, he has served in various capacities since 1990s. As first secretary for the Korean Permanent Mission to the United Nations to 1997, counselor at the Korean Embassy in Senegal to 2001, and director for political affairs at the Korean Embassy in the United States to 2005, and senior counsel at the Korean Consulate General in New York to 2011 and uh, subsequently Hong Kong and now at San Francisco. And he will, have a talk, he will give us a talk about uh, peace and security on the Korean Peninsula. Please welcome Mr. Shin. Hi, good evening everybody. Uh, thank you very much Professor Kim for your kind introduction. Uh, I'm very much, uh, I'm very happy to meet everybody. And this is very first time for me to visit the famous and renowned university uh, of uh, uh, the UC Davis. And thank, my special thanks goes to uh, uh, the Associate Chancellor Regulska. And also thank you very much for Professor Bennett for the organizing this kind of very important and also meaningful event that I'm happy to join together with you. Uh, yes, as actually introdu as introduced, I've been a career diplomat for 29 and 29 years and seven months as of today, eight months. For the last about 30 years, as a Korean career diplomat, I've had two tasks, if I may say. One is to promote bilateral relations between Republic of Korea or Korea and the country I have been posted or the country on countries that I've been working on. Second thing is that the, I've been with those countries and those partners, my second mission was to find out effective ways to deal with North Korea. Needless to say, North Korea has been was a source of the, uh, the, the, the reason why now we have such a proud the Korea-US alliance and such a remarkably successful Korea-US partnership. That was illustrated by Mr. Cobb before. Uh, in a sense, actually, we have to thank North Korea for that reason. But on the other hand, North Korea has been a, the, has has posed uh, the constant threats not only to Korea but also to the Korea U.S. Al the alliance and also to the other countries in Northeast Asia and Asia Pacific region and nowadays with its nuclear the and missile ambitions the entire world with a possibility of proliferation and. The, the, uh, then secondly, I was a few the Korean the diplomats or government officials who started reporting on the pos possibility of dire the famine in, 19, in the mid-1990s. Actually, in 1995, I was working as the first secretary at the Korean Permanent Mission to the United Nations. And I clearly remember by this time that year, 1995, 21 years ago, I came across a WLP official who was very much concerned about 
that possibility. And he and I started chatting. And I started realizing that the, what kind of situation we are about to face. And as you all know, actually, in the subsequent couple of years, like many others, I started believing that this regime must disappear within a couple of years' time. But all against our expectations and anticipation, North Korean regime has survived and has the also as a result and as a consequence has the, uh, caused such a lot of trouble, not only for the Korea and other countries in the international community, but also for its own people. Those, the real stories, I look forward to hearing from Ms. Cho Hajin later. And now, I'd like to, I have many stories to, talk, uh, to share with you, but this evening, the, taking into account the title or the uh, objective of this evening's gathering, I'd like to focus on the North Korean, the North Korea, uh, the, in the uh, aspect of, in terms of its threat to international peace, and also how our two allies, Korea and United States, have been cooperating and coordinating closely you know, to deal with this kind of threat. The, I'll talk about the, the, something on North Korea's threat, and then go Korean government policies, and then finally, peace and security, Northeast Asia and beyond, and the role of the US-Korea alliance. North Korea. Okay, for the last six decades, North Korea has posed a constant threat to the international peace and security. And I'd like to just actually highlight, there are too many aspects of this kind of threats, but I'd like to highlight the two or three aspects. One is that the North Korea is a country that incorporate the nuclear weapon state in its, in its constitution. And second, the, in March 2013, the North Korean regime made it clear that it would pursue so-called Byungjin policy. It is to pursue its economic and economic development and nuclear weapons development at the same time. Actually, the first one is the, uh, the manifestation of the, uh, the audacious or ambitious, the uh, ambitious plan to threaten the international peace and security. The second one is from the beginning, the second, the, uh, the policy is groundless and the, from the beginning is kind of non-starter at best. Because in order to develop its economic develop, in order to uh, pursue its e economic development, North Korea has to have uh, needs the international cooperation, trade, or the uh, economic cooperation with other countries or the foreign direct investment. But because of its nuclear weapons program, later I'll show you, North Korea has uh, has a series of uh, sanctions mechanism dictated by the a series of United Nations Security Council resolutions. So without getting rid of those resolutions, there is no way for North Korea to do business as usual with other members of the international community. And, uh, okay, second one. Peninsula of Provocations. This is the uh, quoted from the Economist, and then the reason why I, I use this the uh, this, uh, this, uh, this the, the picture is that the, it clearly illustrates the the nature of North Korea's provocations. I don't want to go into details. And the as briefly the introduced by Mr. Cobb, North Korea has threat has taken fifth five nuclear tests so far north korea is the only country which has which conducted nuclear tests in the 21st century and has the announced and manifested its 
the uh, intention to develop in the nuclear weapons. And in addition to five nuclear tests, uh, it has uh, conducted 22 ballistic missiles uh, tests this year. Uh, it, it shows, it actually, there's a, st a stark contrast between the young leader Kim Jong-un and then the late leader the Kim Jong-il. The young leader Kim Jong-un is at best the, uh, regarded as a young leader, but very unpredictable and ruthless leader. That needs uh, our the uh, special attention. Okay, the last one was the uh, the fifth nuclear test was the one conducted on September 9th uh, this year, and it is estimated as the largest test, and also the uh, uh, largest test. Okay, and as I said. The, all these kind of nuclear the test, ballistic missile tests, and also pro, a series of provocations are made, have been made the, uh, in, uh, uh, in violation of a series of United Nations Security Council resolutions that I, want, I don't want to go into details. Uh, some of you are very much well familiar with. So, and on the other hand, North Korea has the, uh, insisted that we should have a dialogue without nuclear, uh, denuclearization. But Korea and U.S. government has maintained a very firm position that we need to have some kind of the uh, evidence or some kind of the uh, commitment, genuine commitment by North Korea for the to the its to its uh, denuclearization. We think that the North Korea suggesting a dialogue without denuclearization, while it has the conducted five uh, the nuclear tests, means at first at, the, at best first buying time for enhancing its nuclear cap uh, ca capability. And then second, they somehow try to diminish uh, cooperation on sanctions and pressures uh, posed by the international community. And also, uh, the third is uh, the, the one part of decept is deceptive strategy to avoid sanctions. North Korea hunger game. Okay, North Korea has invested a lot of money and then uh, they wasted a lot of money to the, develop those two programs. First one, missile programs. It has poured, uh, as, uh, estima it, is, uh, it has been estimated to have poured 1,300 million US dollars. And also on luxury goods, 646 million US dollars. Those numbers, when you compare to 150 million US dollars that UN World Program asked the donor nations to give for aid to North Korea in 2013. So with those monies, if they had not gone for the, uh, those strategic provocations, the North Korean regime must have and might have they saved a lot of the relief, the, uh, the dire plight of a lot of its ordinary uh, and innocent peoples. Economic gap, no one, to, uh, I don't want to go into details. And human rights situation in North Korea. While North Korean regime has stuck to this kind of provocate, uh, provocations and the uh, strategic provocations, including nuclear and uh, ballistic missile programs. And on the other hand, it has aggravated the human rights situations in its own country and has not taken care of its own people in a proper way. So I'd like to uh, the, uh, the quote uh, the, the, uh, from the findings of the Commission of Inquiry on Human Rights in DPRK. It was published in 2014. And the, this inquiry, uh, this report was the issued by the, uh, uh, the famous Australian judge. First, 
Crimes against humanita uh, humanity are ongoing in the North uh, DPRK. It was confirmed by an in independent inquiry. The gravity, scale, and nature of these violence, violations reveal a state that does not have any parallel in the contemporary world. It is, it is very grim and dire diagnosis and then in uh, diagnosis and statement. So I'd like to just uh, the, uh, share with you some examples of human rights violations. As was briefly touched upon by Mr. Uh, Jones, the no right to life, no right to liberty, personal safety, equality, freedom of movement. So basically, ordinary North Koreans are deprived of basic human rights. This is another the the important and very uh, grave the uh, problem that we have to face and deal with. And as a result, because of this kind of uh, the dire the uh, humanitarian and human rights and humanitarian situations, we are having more and more North Korean refugees. Then nowadays, actually now there are about. 30,000 North Koreans who have uh, settled down in South Korea. And we, we think that the, there are um, many other North Koreans who are still trying to escape from North Korea and also the uh, entrap between North Korea and South Korea. They're wandering somewhere in China, Southeast Asia, and so on. The basic policy of the Korean government is do our best to give them the necessary assistance. At some point, actually, people may criticize the Korean government that the, it has not done uh, its role or its, uh, what it has to do properly. But the, I can tell you, I was the Director General for North Korean Affairs uh, before uh, the, uh, about two years ago. And one thing I can tell you is that the Korean government has done its best. The, the, we are living in a, the, the, uh, the, uh, the reality. So there's something that Korean government cannot do alone on its own. And the, one of the, uh, the things that Korean diplomats and then Korean governments are doing its best and their best is to, in close coordination and cooperation with those countries concerned, we are doing our best to bring them safely to Korea as far as possible. And Korean government policies, I've touched upon uh, before, but I'd like to sum up in three ways. First one is uh, on the, uh, we would like to, in coordination, in cooperation with the international community, based upon UN Security Council resolutions, we would like to put a uh, very strong and effective sanctions mechanism uh, the, uh, stipulated by the series of UN Security Council resolutions. And secondly, unilateral sanctions. The, in, order, uh, in a way to complement this UN Security Council sanctions mechanism, our government has uh, the introduced the many the sanctions, the uh, measures or the uh, policies and measures. And also, thirdly, uh, the, uh, the thirdly, our government, in close coordination with the U.S. government and also other governments like uh, Japan, Japan and the uh, European Union, we would like to enhance international sanctions mechanism and then pressure mechanism. Uh, UN Security Council resolution we have in place, and also we are about to, uh, we are going to have another com uh, the complementing, more effective and more powerful the UN Security Council resolutions uh, in the near future, in the very near future. And unilateral uh, the action, this, the we the watched the uh, the car, a lot of cars the carrying uh, goods uh, in uh, from the Kaesong Industrial Complex in year 2013. At that time, why that happened? Because North Korean regime it has not the abide by or it has not played with 
the predictable rules with not only Korea, but also with international community. That year, North Korea somehow broke the, the previous agreement and requested to uh, raise the commissions or the salaries for its uh, workers and also the, its own share for allowing the uh, operation of the Gaesong Industrial Complex. As a result, at that time, our government took a very firm position on that. Then, uh, the, uh, uh, the, as, uh, as a sign of dissatisfaction, North Korea just de uh, decided, declared to close the complex and the requested all the Korean companies and workers to leave within, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 48 hours. I'll have to, the number doesn't matter, but you know, within a short time. And in 2016, just before the uh, the before we adopted the uh, uh, the previous the strong the UN Security Council resolution, we Korean government somehow concluded that you know to set an example for international community and also you know to put the really uh, the strong and also the strong uh, the send strong message to North Korea and also show our the uh, the how can I say the firm position we decided to close that Kaesong industrial complex as a matter of the as a way a way to show the our the uh, the resolution to uh, put more pressure on North Korea uh, and also we announced the unilateral sanctions uh, the measures against North Korea in March and. The recently, in the face of continued North Korean provocations, the U.S. government, the, uh, the Korea government and U.S. government jointly declared, announced the uh, introduction of U.S. THAAD system, deployment of THAAD system into Korea. And the one thing I'd like to tell you at this point is that the, yes, the, as a result of North Korean aggression 66 years ago, the Korea-U.S. alliance was born, born in, uh, born and forged in blood. And since then, we have developed uh, very successful the military and security alliance. And as Mr. Cup mentioned, the, the this alliance has been evolving and also is further developing into a global and strat strategic partnership. And the, it means that the, at every level, from the heads of states between our two presidents to the working level, we are coordinating very closely with each other. You cannot imagine how closely we are coordinating. Mr. Cobb mentioned, the, the briefly introduced the couple, the couple of examples. And then uh, I'd like to tell you that the this alliance and this partnership working on a round the clock basis. Really, it is very, the, the, uh, the successful, most exemplar cases of alliance and partnership. So, the, the, when we deal with this kind of strategic provocation and threat, the, the US-Korea, the coordination and cooperation is the foremost important, the joint working mechanism The shutdown of Gaston, and then, uh, yeah, these are the, some examples of the unilateral sanctions. The yeah, here I'd like to stress that the, the reason why we would like to, we try to put more pressure and sanctions on North Korean regime is not because we want to cause much another the additional trouble to ordinary and innocent North Koreans, but also uh, but. We try to, we are aiming at changing North Korean leader, leaderships or regime's attitude or strategic thinking. And eventually uh, having it uh, give up its nuclear, the unwarranted and unnecessary nuclear and missile ambitions. And that system. Here, that uh, the, some people say think about uh, the that system would cause the uh, the strategic imbalance in this part of the world and 
the the I know that there are some the criticisms uh, uh, the raised by some people, not many, but some people. But I, I want to say two things here uh, at an, an introductory level. First one, this is the by nature defensive system. With this de de defensive si system, how could it destabilize the peace and security in that part of the world? And second thing is that the um, the alliance is the relationship. I I I think to commit the lives of our sons and daughters to a common cause, or the common cause or strategic objectives. Our common cause and strategic objectives of our alliance has been for the last 66 years to maintain peace and security in the Korean Peninsula. And this system, we think that we need to protect USFK, US forces in Korea, and also uh, the additionally the Koreans from the possible attacks from North Korea, which has May, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the clearly announced that its intention to use nuclear and missile capabilities against us. Uh, strengthening international pressure that the, okay, you know to mobilize this international pressure, our two governments have been in the core as uh, in other cases. And the our two, uh, the not only our two president, but our two uh, our ministers, the uh, minister Yun and also Secretary Kerry, has held a series of meetings and also the, the telephone talks and uh, the uh, exchanges of views in many ways, in many forms. The to mobilize the international community to put more pressure and sanctions on North Korea, you know, to change its regimes, the uh, strategic decision to give up nuclear and missile uh, ambitions. And IAEA General Conference, the, there that the, uh, uh, the, the, our two countries has led, the, uh, the, the, has the encouraged the other members of the uh, IAEA to adopt the strongest the resolution or statement, uh, strongest terms, the resolution in most strong, uh, the in the strongest terms. Uh, it was uh, it occurred uh, about two months ago. And the we are also trying to cooperate with NATO and EU. And North Korean human rights issue. The, after the COI report, the United Nations General Assembly and all the Third Committee on Human Rights Issues have issued and have adopted uh, numerous resolutions and statements and by, with them have requested and urged North Korea to take proper actions to provide, to ensure the basic human rights of its own people, that it has been it has not been very much successful because North Korean regimes uh, in cooperation. But it does not necessarily mean that we have to uh, uh, we have to just uh, stop here. We have to do our best to bring the justice to the uh, those North Korean people and also the human the ensure the human rights. And peace and security. Uh, I've touched upon some of them already, and the, there is an Asia paradox, and the, our government in close coordination and cooperation with the U.S. government, and also in cooperation with Japan, China, and Russia, would like to promote uh, the so-called NAPC, Northeast Asia Peace and Security Initiative. This initiative is aimed, uh, aimed at promoting cooperation and by doing so eliminating mistrust and uh, the enhancing uh, cooperation between uh, understanding and cooperation between peoples on uh, focused on soft issues. So Korea-US alliance, I've already uh, touched upon and also Mr. Cobb illustrated upon that. And I'd like to stress that the global partnership, 
So starting with the strategic, uh, the, the uh, military and security alliance, now we are cooperating with each other to share our common values with peoples around the world and who are in dire need. So basically, our government's position with is with enhanced re, uh, status, international status, and also enhanced the uh, resources, we would like to pay back what we owe to the EU Americans and also American government. That is the uh, maintain peace, bring peace and security to other people, and also help them to develop its own economy, and then help them to develop its own society. So the, the let's go together is the battle cry that the Korean, Korean and American soldiers get uh, get together. So the at the end of the meeting, the uh, we uh, the, uh, the uh, shouted, "Let's go together!" It means that the 같이 갑시다 in Korean. So what a uh, great alliance! So this is the uh, quote from the Secretary Kerry, and then USCSR report. And the, once again, our two countries have been very much closely coordinating and also cooperating with each other at various levels to uh, cope up with the uh, North, Korean's, North Korea's uh, strategic provocations and North Korean the problems and issues. Recently, U.S. Ambassador to uh, the U.N. visited Korea to the, the, the discuss our common approach to uh, at the United Nations. And trilateral cooperation, I don't want to go into details. But this the trilateral cooperation is very important because with these three countries sharing United States as uh, the, com the common ally, the the basically sharing the common values, the, the freedom and democracy and liberty, and also pursuing the same strategic goals, peace, security, and prosperity in that region and also in the entire world. There are many areas that need our cooperation. So at the strategic level, policy level, to the working level, we are, closing, uh, we are cooperating with each other very closely. When I was Director General, the first meeting was held the, the, just after the appointment of the Deputy Secretary uh, Blinken. Uh, it was, uh, and he visited Korea, and then the, since then, this trilateral cooperation between the vice, at the vice minister level the, started. And then since then, the minister level meeting and also the higher level meetings have occurred. Oh, sorry, actually, the, uh, the heads of state level meeting occurred and ministers level meeting occurred before, but they uh, more actively pursued. Extended deterrence against North Korea, uh, time, time is squeezed. Okay, and strong deterrence. This is the very nature of the Korea-US alliance. And then we are cooperating on human rights issues. And conclusion, I don't want to go into details, but I'd like to uh, have the taken a couple of moments to just have a look at it. So all these kind of dire con the situation uh, require, uh, the requested us to uh, the take the North Korean nuclear missile programs, the, the, the gravity and urgency of North Korean nuclear missile programs. And now we have to the, uh, realize that the North Korea is nearing the final stage of nuclear weaponization and becoming a direct threat even to the continental US. And second one is that this kind of extraordinary circumstances calls call for an extraordinary responses. That's the reason why the Korean government, not only Korean government, but also US-Korean uh, the alliance uh, have decided to put more pressure and sanctions on North Korea to change its strategic thinking. Uh, it means that it's a regime and also leader, Kim Jong-un. And a holistic approach is required, uh, needed. The holistic approach means that the, we have to tackle not only the uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction issues, but also human rights issues, humanitarian issues at the same time. So in order to realize this, 
we need the cooperation of the international community. So far, as I have already ex uh, explained to you, our two governments, Korea and U.S. governments, have been the, in the core in every effort to, in, uh, in this regard. So I think uh, the, regardless of the changes of the, any gov uh, government in, on any part of the, the two ally, uh, the allies, I'm sure this kind of coordination and cooperation will the will uh, be further strengthened and then consolidated. Thank you very much, and let's go together. Kachi kapshida. Thank you very much. <laughs>